Greetings from Ada First United Methodist Church. My name is Kurt Klingler and I'm part of the prayer team and I'd like to spend a little time with you uh, in devotion talking about prayer. The first thing we need to talk about is truly what is prayer and basically or the easiest thing to come up with is prayer is a personal relationship with God. Uh, the relationship that you would think of no different than people having with earthly friends or family or colleagues, same thing. It's a relationship, but a relationship is both. It's talking and listening. So while we do find ourselves talking a lot and listening very little, sometimes that's an issue with prayer too, but we need to make sure that we're doing that. But we're also listening to what God has to say back to us when we're talking. A lot of times we find that we want to use all these times to tell God all the things we want but we don't listen to what he's actually saying back to us. So that's kind of a big thing, but you need to continue having that relationship with God by daily or hourly, or even more than that, a communication with God, an open communication back and forth with him. So you may be thinking a lot of the pictures you see are people praying and they are on their knees. And you might ask, do I have to do that? And for me, my opinion is, yes, you do. And there will be people out there saying, well, I can't do it. And I, I truly understand that. There are medical issues or physical issues that you can't do that. And I understand that. But let me explain to you what my thought is. The only way or one of the bigger ways that you can show submission is by being on your knees. And the same thing that you're submitting to the king in the medieval times, that's what you're doing with God. You're submitting to him, and he is the king of kings. So why not submit to him? But sometimes that's difficult. And so you need to still do that to show submission. But that's the hard part because sometimes we don't like to submit. We don't like to give up control. And I hear some of you saying amen right now, because, and I'm saying it too. It's very true. Control sometimes is very scary. And we don't want to feel fear and we don't want to feel scared. But we do have to submit that control to God. And the easiest way, as, as I was thinking of this, the easiest prayer that you can pray is by saying, Jesus. Jesus. Just his name. Demons will flee when they hear his name. And sometimes... When you are at the darkest hour, when you're at the bottom of that pit and you have nothing to say, you can't form words or you have no idea what to truly say to God, just the, just the words, just Jesus' name is there. That's enough. But I also think that's the most difficult prayer to do as well. And I say that because of earlier saying that whole thing of submitting. You are submitting to God, saying, God, I can't do this by myself. I can't do it alone. I need you. I've got to have you. That's submission. That's total submission. And we must do that. In Scripture, we find Philippians 4. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And how true that is. When you find yourself in that storm, when you find yourself really reeling because something has rocked your world and you don't know how to control yourself or you don't know what to do, what's the first thing that a lot of people do? What should you do? Going to social media and asking opinions, asking your family and friends, going to your pastor, all those are good. Well, the social media is not. But all of those are good if they're secondary. The first thing you must do is go to God. You've got to bring everything to God first because he's the only one that can change the situation you're in. He's the only one that can calm that storm. While you think your family and friends can, they cannot. They can help you and they can walk you through it. They can listen, but God's the only one that can change that for you. And when we submit and we have that fear, we were talking submission earlier, when we have that fear of submission, giving that worry and fear hope, that's not from God. That's from the enemy. And he, he loves for us to be fearful of our lives or what we do next. 
But when we submit and we give everything to God, when we lay all those things that are bothering us at the feet of the cross, at God's lap, when we do that, there is no more fear because we know through our faith that God can fix it. God can heal it. God can do whatever we ask of him. And since we're talking about that, let's talk about faith. Because without having faith, I don't think there's a real reason to pray. Because if you're praying and you don't have faith that God can change or fix what you're praying for, why are you praying? Why are you even praying to God? You've got to have faith that he can trust or that he can change that. You have to have trust that whatever issue you're going through, any storm, any disease, any pain, anything that you're going through, you must have faith that he can change it. And that's true faith. Because what we need to do is go by God's will. We must live in God's will. It might be different than our will, and that's scary. That's the part where we can tr try to control. But we've got to believe that God's will is the best for us. We must have faith that he hears every prayer. And we must have faith, and we must expect that all the promises that he's made in Scripture that he will follow through with. And that's the best part of that is he doesn't tell lies. Scripture is the word of God and what he says will happen because he's in charge. He's in control of everything. Scripture tells us in Hebrews 11, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That is faith. That's taking the first step on a staircase and not having any idea where it's leading you to. That's faith. Without these two things, hand in hand, going together, faith and prayer, your relationship with God can't grow. If you don't have both of those, either you don't have faith that God can change what you're praying for, or you're not talking to him. Don't allow yourself to break the relationship with God. Allow God to be in control. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for just the time to be alone with you. Knowing, God, that you hear us, that you love us, and you want us to prosper. God, we ask for your will to be in control of our lives. God, give us the strength and the perseverance to give up control of our lives and allow you to control us. Give us the strength to do what you'd ask us to do. Give the perseverance to run that race that you would have us run and allow us never to forget you, you are in control of everything. Thank you, Father. We love you. Amen. Through that prayer, God's hearing us. He's hearing you. If there's more that you have to pray, you don't need to pray it with me. Go to God. Go to God first. One of the things that I also wanted to talk about was a little bit of what the prayer team is doing behind the scenes through this quarantine time that we have. Right now, we're currently helping Pastor Brandy call, call congregational members. We're asking if there's prayers, private or public prayers. We're praying for those prayers. The prayers that you may hear Sunday morning, we're praying for those as well. Uh, one of the things that I do is I have what's called the prayer app. And I'm using the prayer app for myself individually by adding my own prayers. And I add all of my prayers on there, but it also gives me reminders. And those reminders are when to pray. I have two reminders set. One is for seven o'clock at night and one is for nine o'clock at night. And I have specific prayers that I pray every night, some at seven and some at nine. And that's the prayer app. You can get it for both your devices or whatnot. You can get it for your computer. Um, I'll put some pictures up and stuff. But that being said, prayer and faith, those two things are what we must have. Blessings to all you. God loves you. Amen.